Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast. Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang sandiga ng sambayanan mula sa walang labis at walang kulang na pagbabalita, paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na hinerasyon. Buhay Online Sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Ating tunghayan, pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online. Buhay online, sikahan at kaalamang pangkabuhayan. Alamin ang pinakalatest trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang sa anak ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito. At ngayon, narito na ang ating host, ang ating Teki Mami, si J.C. Bautista. Hello there. Happy Friday everyone. Yep. Friday na naman pong muli sa kabilisan ng pagdaan ng panahon at ng oras. Happy Friday. Welcome to Boy Online. Whoever's here that I can't see the names. Hello, welcome. Good morning. Happy Friday. Uh, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyo. It's a Friday. Actually, it's Nice weather this morning. I woke up with the chilly, chill factor because 28 ano, degrees lang. Uh, that's really, really pleasant for us here sa Pilipinas, right? Pero sa America, it's 12 degrees. Uh, 12, right? And in uh, in Taiwan, it's what? Simi- they're having a cold spell then. It's about 18 or 20 degrees. But anyway... Happy, happy Friday, everyone. Weekend na naman. Okay? And uh, sa uh, mga balita po, of course, regarding uh, the the Omicron virus, uh, countries all around the world are changing their travel protocols again and quarantine protocols dahil dito sa Omicron virus na to. Uh, sinabi sa Pilipinas, di ba, nakadiscover ng isang just one case, which is... Uh, from somebody that came from Hong Kong. Sa Japan naman, dalawang kaso na sila. As I was talking to my student yesterday or last night, they had two cases of the Omicron virus. One coming from South Africa, yung tao, yung isa naman galing sa Peru. Anyway, so, and I was talking to my student from Taiwan, they have one, 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 uh, one or two, one, uh, Uh, that came that came from uh, a country in Asia then. So anyway, so so that's what's happening. Hello there. Shrey, I'd like to welcome Shrey, my colleague in the ESL industry. Hello there, Shrey. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining me this morning. So I was just, I was just talking about the changed protocols regarding travel because of the Omicron virus, right? So um, so yeah, so that's the thing that happened. Okay, and of course, uh, here in the Philippines, we're still talking about the the pilot. Um, What happened now? What is this? Ah, oh, my OBS is not working. Anyway, oh, okay, I'm back. So I was, as just uh, as I was saying, in the Philippines, of course. Am I back? Hmm. 
Am I back online? Okay, I was just talking about uh, in the Philippines, of course, the issues, of course, aside from the political campaigning, it's about the pilot uh, test on face-to-face -face education that happened. Uh, it first started November 15. Uh, nagbukas po yung mga public schools, yung 100 public schools opened. And then, uh, nung November 21, follow the 20, supposedly originally 20 private schools may nag back out na dalawa. So it just became 18 private schools that opened November 21. So we, we talked about it last week that, um, uh, the, the first so far so good on the first week of the pilot test there were no infections in the pri public schools but now let's let's uh we'll give you an update on on this online uh in this face-to-face -face learning as uh coming from the dep ed or the department of um, education Okay, the DEP, the DEPED monitors first day of pilot face-to-face -face classes, okay? Uh, all right, in an effort to ensure the smooth implementation of that pilot face-to-face -face classes in private schools, officials of the DEPED uh, were monitored uh, closely, okay? In November 22, they visited some participating schools in the pilot run, okay? So what, what happened was, okay, on, on its Facebook page, the Department of Education or DepEd updates on the first day of the pilot face-to-face -face classes in private schools. Okay, this is what they monitored. Okay, Bureau, the Bureau of Curriculum Development Director Jocelyn Andaya personally inspected two private schools in Central Luzon that are included in the pilot study of limited face-to-face -face classes. This is the school Academica de Meridien in San Antonio, Zambales, and Mother of Good Counsel Seminary in San Fernando, Pampanga. Oh, wow. I didn't know it's here in, in my province that they they had face-to-face uh, -face, uh, classes. Wow. So it was in Zambales and San Fernando. Okay. So they, dis they visited the classroom situation. Of course, it's similar to what you are seeing here on here okay this is how the classes were being conducted okay all right okay okay of course i will speak in the vernacular during her visit and daya shared that the students were very excited to go back to their schools nakita ko ang kahandaan ng ating mga paaralan at ang pagtutulungan ng mga paaralan at ng mga lokal na pamalahan Pamahalaan. I saw the readiness of our schools and the cooperation of schools and local governments. This is what Andaya said. Okay. All right. Andaya explained that both public and private schools underwent the same selection process for pilot face to face classes. All 120 schools, 100 public and 20 private, two back out, were subjected to school safety assessment and validation and were given permission by the respective local governments or LGUs to hold limited in-person classes. As part of the joint memorandum circular of the Department of Education and the Department of Health, which is the DOH, parents' consent was also needed. But of course, that I think that's first and foremost, no? I think the, the, the consent of the parents is first before they can even conduct these classes, uh, you know. Parents' consent was also needed before students can participate in the pilot run. And because I know for a fact that a lot of parents are still very worried about going back to face-to-face -to -face classes, especially now that this Omicron virus is, you know, uh, emerging, right? Okay. So at least 60 students from grade one uh will particip uh, have participated in the pilot run, okay? To ensure everyone's safety, hand washing areas, drop off points, parents holding area, and flaglets for pedestrian and distance protocol were put in place to ensure that health protocols are observed, okay? Pilot face-to-face -face classes also study, uh, started in Oxmont Memorial Academy in Kalinog, Iloilo. Wow, okay? Okay, do you want to see how how it is there? Okay, let's try to see. Okay, I'm going to try. 
and show you that's that school okay bear with me bear with me hello there sin shabuste good morning thank you thank you for coming as always thank you thank you for your support every day sincha hello sincha uh sincha who's vacationing in manila uh, in the philippines from kuwait very good welcome back are you still in quarantine sincha but um okay i hope uh, you're enjoying your stay however long or are, are, are you already with your family or still in quarantine? Because the protocols for quarantine uh, have been shortened in the Philippines. But of course, I don't know now with the Omicron. They're, they're releasing new information regarding that. Okay. So anyway, so let me show you that school. Okay. Uh, all right okay let me get it let me show you that school in iloilo this is another province here in the philippines okay let me just grab it i'm sorry pardon me uh, school sorry uh, where have where did it go there you go. Okay. Hold on. Um, okay, there you go. Okay, this is the school. See? Look at how. There you go. Okay. See that? There's distance. Okay. Going to the school. So this is for grade school. All right. So the parents, they leave their child there on the gate and then okay then they go to the classroom and this is how the classrooms look right uh, this is how the classrooms look all right there you go okay wow sabi ni Sincha Buste hindi na po ako naka-quarantine sa daro po kami lumapag last po but I observed strict protocols and kahit sa loob ng bahay, nakamask po ako. Nag-report pa nga po ako sa barangay namin pagkarating. Wow! So, um, no more ano, hotel quarantine, even in the Philippines. Good job. Because in America, they, they ask the people to just do the quarantine at home, right? For one week. But very good, Sincha. So you're you're home now with your family, okay? Enjoy your stay, all right? So so look at the classroom setup ito. Ito yung, this is how the classrooms look for the pilot face-to-face -face study uh, schooling, no? So, uh, meanwhile, okay, DepEd Sox Cargen Regional Director Carlito Rocafort also visited the Midsayap Montessori Center in Cotabato Province where 64 kindergarten to grade 3 pupils joined the pilot run of limited face-to-face -face classes. Those for kindergarten naman, okay? Dep had confirmed that 18 out of the 20 private schools, which were earlier identified, pushed through with the first day of pilot face-to-face -face classes. Like I said, two, two schools backed out, all right? Okay, in connection to that, all right, in connection to that, okay? Okay, more recent news about uh, the pilot face-to-face -face classes, all right? 28 Metro Manila schools are to join Okay, this is out, out, as of yesterday. 28 Metro Manila schools are to join pilot face-to-face pilot -face classes starting December 6. Okay, this is from the Department of Education. The Department of Education on Thursday, which is uh, yesterday, confirmed that 28 schools in the National Capital Region or NCR are set to join the pilot implementation of limited face-to-face -face classes in basic education for school year 2021 to 2022. Okay, sana all right. Sana even the the I know the college now my son's school so that he he can have uh, already the the motivation to go to school. Okay. All right. So. Okay, Tita Agnes Lakap, welcome to the show. Hello, Tita Agnes. So you're already in Batangas now. Tita Agnes Lakap, who was in Arayat until recently, now moved to Batangas, I guess. 
you are in Batangas at Louis' house, your son Louis Dairit. So welcome Tita Agnes Lakap to the show. She's also one of our regular supporters here and viewers. Thank you very much. So, so okay, so uh, as I was saying, uh, the news po, uh, so for yesterday from Department of Education, there are NCR schools that will start on December 6th, the face-to-face -face classes, okay? Uh, based on the list issued by the Department of Education, these are the Metro Manila schools that have been approved to hold limited face-to-face -face classes starting Monday next week. Okay, you want me to, okay, you want me to show the list. I hate these violator things that are from the... <laughs> I hate it that there's like videos like, my God, when you look at their, their internet, it's all inundated by ads. It's annoying, all right? I will just say na lang, okay? Well, well, there's a, 28 schools. These are just 28 schools that are being added to the list of uh, pilot face-to-face -face classes, all right? Okay, the schools that are going to open... Uh, face-to-face -face classes starting Monday next week, December 6th, Andres Bonifacio Elementary School, okay? Andres Bonifacio Elementary School. Okay, let me just... Bagumbong, Bagumbong Elementary School. I, I will just try to book the list because I hate this thing that's the video that keeps... I uh, annoying, it's so annoying. And that news about that cop that died that just keeps bugging my thing, you know. Uh, how do I remove this? Oh my god. Okay, never mind. Okay, so I'll, I'll just talk. Oh, let me see the list. Let me try. Okay. Ha. Ah. Hold on. I'll do it because if the list is too long, and besides, you know, so that you can see which schools there are. They are because that seems to be blurring my vision. Okay, annoying, but I will try and then read the rest. Okay, all right, there you go. Okay, here's the school list of the 28 schools that have been added to the roster of the ones taking pilot face-to-face uh, -face classes. Okay, let me just remove this a little bit because I'm going to give way to the list. Okay, that's how. Okay. Yeah, okay, there you go. 28 schools are joining the roster of those that open face-to-face -face classes in the Philippines, okay? These are classes from the Metro Manila area. Wow. But not public schools, okay? All right. Here you go, okay? There you go, okay? I shall read it. Okay. These are the list of the 28 schools that have joined the, uh, the list of uh, private school, I mean, NCR schools or National Capital Region schools that open. They have been approved to hold limited face-to-face -face classes starting Monday next week, December 6th. Okay. Okay. So the list is Andres Bonifacio Elementary School, Bagumbong Elementary School, Con Comembo Elementary School. They didn't say kung saan ito, mga ito, right? Uh, Santiago Sehuco Memorial Integrated Secondary School, Amado T. Reyes Elementary School, Renato R. Lopez Elementary School, Aurora A. Quezon Elementary School, Ramon Avancena High School, St. Mary Elementary School, Tanyong High School, this is in Marikina, wow, Pututan Elementary School, Tunasan National High School, Bangkulasi Senior High School, Filimonte Lizan Senior High School, Don Gallo Elementary School, okay, Don Gallo Elementary School, La Huerta Elementary School, uh, Pedro Zamora Elementary School, Ugong National 
uh, high school, so I guess it's in Barrio Ugong, Pasig, Pasig Elementary School, Bagong Silangan Elementary School, Payatas B Elementary School, Pedro Cruz Elementary School, Ricardo P. Cruz Senior Elementary School, Senator Renato Campanero Cayetano Mem Memorial Science and Technology High School, Roberta de Jesus Elementary School, Disciplina Village, Bignay Extension, Tagalog Elementary School, Las Piñas National High School, and Las Piñas City National Senior High School in Manuyo com Campus. All right. The, the DEPED started the pilot implementation of limited face-to-face -face classes for public schools on November 15, where 97 out of the 100 identified started in-person classes on the first day. So there were three that didn't start, and then two in the private school. The remaining three also pushed through ah, with the pilot run within that week. So humabol, humabol sa pagbukas yung tatlong private public schools. All right, very good. Okay. So as we said, no, a week after, twenty private schools were set to were set to join the pilot run, but only eighteen schools pushed through on November twenty two after two identified schools deferred their participation. So they just moved it, all right? Uh, okay. So, yeah. So uh, remember our news last week uh, that there was a success, uh, that the pilot face-to-face -face classes seemed very successful according to the DepEd, which is they actually based that on the public schools. Okay. So moving right along. Excuse me. Okay, so moving right along. More news, okay. Uh, from technology, okay. Uh, regarding the medical world, naman, okay, and of course in connection to the pandemic. Uh, where are my topics here? Let me just remove this school, okay. I'll put it aside now because we're done. Okay, oops. Hello, thank you for the, the thumbs up. Thank you for the thumbs up. All right, so this is the about the school. Now we're going to do the news regarding what happened here. Uh, let me put it up front lang ha. There you go. Oh no, that's not it. <laughs> this is already done with this news. Sorry, I'm sorry. Here you go, okay? All right, so now we we're done with this. Our, our pilot schools are finished, okay? Let's do this. Uh, my next, okay. Teleconsulting and innovative, and innovative channels help strengthen patient-doctor connection during the pandemic, okay? Of course, right? Because... Uh, we're into teleconsulting for those who are afraid to go to the hospitals for checkup, uh, myself included, because you know it's so so easy to contract, so easy to contract the virus, right? If you go to the hospital. But anyway, so yeah. So they're saying that um. Yeah, teleconsulting and innovative channels help strengthen patient doctor connection during this pandemic yes okay and how 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 are we able to do that in the last year and a half of the healthcare industry like most others it has turned to creative channels to maintain communication lines open with patients in order to give them medical attention and care if we may say so the pandemic's benefit to us has been that it has taught us how to adapt technology and use it to enrich our daily lives and make us feel better throughout this health crisis that we are undergoing, right? And thank God really for technology, we are able to maintain our resilience in this situation, okay? Whether it's online education or, or an education and also in the medical field, right? Okay, uh, a show called Kamusta Doc in the Philippines is an initiative that aims to help patients reconnect with their doctors during the transition to the new normal, okay? Well, Kamusta Doc is an initiative that does that. It raises awareness 
about the risk factors, signs, and symptoms of the leading causes of death among Filipinos. Amidst the pandemic, the top causes of death among Filipinos remain to be uh, ang mga ang mga mga sakit na na cause of death dito sa atin sa Pilipinas are unang una heart diseases, okay, cancer, stroke, diabetes, pneumonia, and hypertension. Ayun na nga yung mga may pneumonia pag kayo nagka COVID fatal talaga, right? Itong programa na to na kamusta doc, okay? also provides patients with tips okay and updates on the channels available to them to strengthen their partnership with doctors throughout their health seeking journey okay it highlights the efforts made by healthcare facilities to ensure the safety of patients and healthcare staff while providing appropriate care usong uso na po ngayon yung mobile um, mobile doctors mobile hospital or actually Right now, also, you know, they can come to your house. They can test you for PCR, for antigen. They can also give um, uh, some assistance for COVID patients that are uh, that are recovering in the house or quarantining from home. Uh, there are those mobile hospitals and mobile doctors and mobile consultants uh, and actually online consultancies also, right? This program provides patients with tips and updates on the channels available to them to strengthen their partnership with doctors throughout their health-seeking journey, okay? Our doctors and facilities also had to adapt to the unprecedented situation that the pandemic threw everyone into a, and, and finding new ways in order for them to continue serving our patients. This is what was said by Secretary of PHAPI Corporate, Richard Lino. Lirio, sorry, Richard Lirio. Uh, Lirio also noted that Reports have been coming out about the growing number of Filipino doctors and patients adopting telemedicine. Okay, we already been doing this for the past more than two years. Ah, uh, more than yeah, more than a year, almost two years. They there were challenges, according to Dr. Patrick Moral, Associate Professor, Department of Medical Ethics in the UC USD Facility of Medicine and Surgery. Okay, when you start calling your doctors on your mobile phone. You're already on telemedicine, of course. That is telemedicine in action. Telemedicine has improved many things, but performing physical exams remains a challenge, of course. Diba? You really have to go there. Tsaka yung x-ray, diba? X-rays, uh, blood tests, right? Para ka magpa-physical and history. Pag gusto mong magpa-physical exam for annual physical exam, you still have to go to that. I just recently went for x-rays. But I used high precision, okay? This is not a hospital. Kasi mas takot akong magpunta sa hospital, mas nakakahawa dun eh. So, uh, may social distancing naman and everything and safety pro protocols doon. No face shield, face mask, you can't get inside. So, I had my x-rays at high precision, which is actually very, very, very convenient also and very, very quick, right? Faster than making pila in the hospital and... And, and then, ma maano ka pa dyan ng exposure to COVID, uh, uh, COVID infected people. But anyway, telemedicine has improved many things. But performing physical exams like lab tests nga is very challenging. Okay, when we examine, when, when patients are examined via telemedicine, they have limitations. For example, they cannot examine them physically. But one advantage of teleconsulting is that we can now see their surroundings and who they live with. Okay? We, uh, that's what they said. Itong kamusta doc na ito. Sabi ni Dr. Lirio, we can see if the people around them have a cough or are ill. <laughs> they can see. Pakikita mo naman, dumadaan sa camera, umubo. Whatever. You know, or you might, perhaps you can hear them coughing, right? In general, the most significant challenge is the high cost of telemedicine. However, in times of high demand, we hope that the cost will eventually become affordable in the future, explained Dr. Moral during the Q&A portion of the webinar. Okay? Recently, the public has noticed a relaxation of restrictions, a decrease in the number of COVID-19 cases, and the efforts of the healthcare facilities to implement a slew of safety measures all of which contribute to building Filipinos' confidence in returning to healthcare facilities for consultation. Okay, this include, according to Lirio, 
creating separate waiting areas for non-COVID patients, requiring COVID-19 screening, and completion of a declaration from prior to entering hospitals, and frequently sanitizing high-contact areas such as door handles, railings, and benches. Ayan nga po. Because that is the fear of the people. That's why they don't want to go to the hospitals because there's no separate waiting area for everybody. But the thing is, nga, how are you going to know if those people are are infected or not? Because they go to the hospital because they want to be examined. So how are you going to know that? Ano yan? ESP? Six cents? Like, oh, this one, you should fall in line. You should sit over here because you're COVID positive. How are you going to segregate people? You're, the only way you can do that is if before they enter, you're going to test them already, right? Because it says they're creating separate waiting areas for non-COVID patients, all right? But the thing is now, you won't know if they're COVID patients if they don't take the test there, all right? Patients are also encouraged to make an appointment with their doctors before going to the hospital or clinic in order to avoid overcrowding and maintain physical distance. But that's the thing. It's the waiting areas too that are crowded, right? For especially for uh, you know medical offices to see the doctors. The there's always like a lot of people, especially on the weekends. With the safety measures healthcare professionals have been putting in place, immediate and regular consultations are possible even though COVID nineteen is still around. It don't see Nabi Nilirio. The best time to see their doctor now is now. The Kamusta Doc initiative was prompted by the staggering number of deaths from non-communicable diseases in the country. Based on a report by the Philippine Statistics Authority, or the PSA, in 2020 alone, 100,000 Filipinos died from heart disease, over 60,000 from cancer, almost 40,000 from diabetes, roughly around 35,000 from pneumonia, and 25,000 from hypertension. So ito ah, hindi po ito COVID-related diseases. Ito po yung mga normal na regular mga sakit na kinakamatay ng mga Filipinos. At yan po ang statistics last year. There have been far fewer COVID-19 fatalities than any of these non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, cancer, hypertension, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. Okay? Yan po, our own uh, Tito Jaime Lacab, dad, daddy po ng aking uh, fiancé, passed away last year and he, and he had COPD. Aside from that po, uh, yun po, he had a heart attack and, uh, and passed away June of last year. Uh, I'm sorry, June of this year, not last year, June of this year, I'm sorry. He passed away uh, eight months ago. Exactly, or, or June, July, August, September, October. Yeah, seven months ago, my 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 supposedly father-in-law passed away, uh, and he had no, he didn't have any COVID, but we were afraid. He was actually in the tent. He was outside the tent. Nung po siya namatay sa tent na uh, actually po, I think when when we brought him to the hospital, he was already dead on arrival. But uh, ang nakita niyo po yun talaga sa tent po siya ng ng uh, Calcutta Hospital dun po siya na parang walang masyadong facilities dun to revive, I don't know, I don't want to say but then, yeah, they, he wasn't even admitted inside emergency room he was in a tent ganun po kasi uh, sa, ano, sa uh, mga hospital, kapuno yung mga COVID patients no? and uh, in fact, when we were going to to bring the body when after he died, we were told that we could not do that because everybody was a suspected uh, COVID patient, a uh, COVID, um, yeah, COVID uh, infected person. But uh, we we refuted that by saying, you know, he didn't have COVID, and for them to test, I've been like, ah, if you're gonna have a test, it's an extra cost. We didn't care about that. We didn't. We wanted because if we didn't do that. He would have just cremated his body and treated him like a COVID, uh, you know, COVID patient, and that wasn't right. So we had the COVID, the PCR test done, cost, cost a, an extra few thousands, right? And and true enough, he wasn't positive with COVID. He passed away because of a heart attack and because he had COPD too, right? So, so itong campaign ng ng Doc is encouraging 
people to go to the hospitals now for treatment also. Because overall, 41% of adults have, avoid, have avoided medical care during this pandemic because of concerns about COVID-19. And rightfully so naman, you know, understandable because it's really scary. You can pick it up there in the hospital. You don't know the one that's waiting for you uh, beside you there in the in the waiting room is COVID positive, right? So overall, 41% of adults have avoided medical care during this pandemic because of concerns for COVID-19. 12% avoided urgent emergency care, that's an emergency room, and 31.5% avoided routine care. Because, But also because even if you do, you weren't avoiding those people who really wanted to go to the hospital for emergency, I, I, I always go back, revert back to, to my friend, God rest her soul, Claire de la Fuente, who's a very prominent figure in the OPM industry here in the Philippines, um, a musical icon. She passed away also in the tent, barely making it actually to the emergency room because she had COVID, but she was waiting for two days in a tent for a room. And she had an anxiety attack because apparently she died from a heart attack, not from COVID. Because she, you know, she was very, very anxious and, and, and excited and worried being alone in a tent because you're not allowed to have any any visitors if you're COVID positive. She was all alone. Anxiety brought that on. She, eventually, she, she had a heart attack. She didn't even reach her room. When she was finally being given a room that day, she passed away. And that's so sad. And that is the thing. And uh, another another music, uh, uh, another colleague in the music industry, the one who sang Pusong Bato, they were looking, they went to, they were turned away by 35 hospitals. And he died in this van, you know, because he just needed um, oxygen. That is very sad. So, but now they're campaigning for us to go to the hospitals to seek medical attention or it's still crowded but anyway they're saying that we need they need people to get back to taking charge of their health especially those with serious non-communicable diseases before they get worse prevention is always better than cure the, the earlier they consult and seek medical attention the better for everyone this is especially true during this pandemic it's true the man you know because health is really really uh, everybody's wealth right now to have, right? Timely management of medical conditions will lessen the potential for these diseases to worsen, okay? Uh, you know, but the number of cases that are, that are happening in the Philippines right now are dropping considerably. There are only 500 new cases today, as of today. Thank you, Lord. And and little by little, we're trying to go back to to. to uh, to what was normal but with this omicron virus you know that i hope the findings will be positive to say that i mean not positive to say that it's not going to be as bad okay because uh, there's mixed messages about this omicron virus okay anyway uh, all right so this is especially true Timely management of medical conditions will lessen the potential for these diseases to worsen to the point of becoming an emergency. This is one way of alleviating our emergency services that attend to both COVID-19 and non-COVID-19 patients. Because this is what's happening, okay? When you don't, when you're not feeling well, you're not feeling good. Takot kang pumunta sa hospital para magpa check up, de ba? Kasi nga natatakot ka naman talagang mahawa and rightfully so. Kaya nga nag, nag uh, ano yung telemedicine at saka pati yung mga remote na hospital roving hospitals ang tinatawag dyan to, to service you in your own house. But of course, this Kamusta Doc Show is trying to encourage people to go to the hospital for uh, uh, for uh, no, check up. Well, di na nga if you have to do lab work, of course we can still go. But like I said, there's also options like high precision, which is a parang mini hospital. It's a lab place, okay? Pero yun din, kung maraming tao, huwag may kaya pumasok, right? Okay, so, so that's the news there about the medical field. <coughs> International naman tayo, right? Let's find out what's going on in the world. 
and travel. Okay. Travel restrictions for Omicron variant. What do they mean? Okay. This week, a U.S. travel ban. Ayan, di ba? The U.S. has opened its ports for two months now. Uh, you know, people can go. But that's why a lot of my friends here in the Philippines have gone to America because no quarantine restrictions. But this week, a U.S. travel ban went into effect, barring travelers from eight countries now. Kahapon, apat pa lang eh. But now, barring travelers from eight countries in Southern Africa, the region which first identified the Omicron coronavirus, coronavirus variant. As of Wednesday, the variant has been detected in more than 20 countries, including the U.S., which has identified it in my hometown, California, Minnesota, and Colorado. Many more states are expected to follow. Okay, The World Health Organization labeled the Micron coronavirus variant a, a variant of concern. Okay, On November 24, sparking uh, worries that another new wave of COVID-19 might land in the middle of a travel-filled and close-quartered holiday season. In response to health experts' expectations that the new variant will cause a spike in cases alongside the Delta variant, kasi nga, you know, inaano, in, inaano pa lang, iniinda pa lang ng America yung Delta variant, eh, ito naman, following suit is Omic Omicron. Ano ba itong pangalan nito? Parang robot, Omicron. So, Sony, Sony Trinitron. <laughs> Para siyang tra Transformers. The Omicron virus. Tara. Anyway, so uh, the the president of the United States, President Joe Biden, is uh, foreseeing a spike in the cases alongside the Delta variant. So he announced a plan. Okay, Thursday, yesterday, he said that uh, part of his plan is to tighten the travel testing rules. Ayan naman. Okay, starting next week, people coming into the U.S will need to get tested for COVID-19 within one day prior to departure. Okay, one day. At least one day before leaving, okay? The government is also extending mask rules for public transportation, including airplanes and buses through March 18. Okay, so magmamask pa rin lahat ng tao, airplanes, buses, okay, public transport, the train. Bakit ng train hindi na sinabi dito? As a precautionary measure, we have more information. I am ordering additional air travel restrictions from South Africa and seven other countries. Okay. Uh, Biden said November 26 when he announced the travel ban. Okay. As we move forward, we will continue to be guided by what science and medical team advises. Okay. On Wednesday, Reuters reported that the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention ask airlines carrying passengers into the U.S. from Southern Africa to share passengers' names and information with the CDC so state and local public health agencies could be aware and monitor that. So here's what we know so far about the travel ban, okay? Which countries? Okay, ang tanong. Anong mga bansa ang, ang merong effect ng travel ban, okay? Which countries does the travel ban affect? Which countries have Omicron? Okay. Okay, let me, let me tell you now. Okay. Travel is, re, is restricted to America from, con, from eight countries in Southern Africa where there are cases of COVID-19 fueled by the new variant, by the new variant, the Omicron. Okay. Una, una na, South Africa, the country that first reported the new variant to the WHO, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Namibia, Lesotho, Eswatini, Mozambique, and Malawi are included in the ban. Okay? This means residents or travelers from those countries can't fly to the U.S. if they've been in one of the restricted countries within the last 14 days, according to Biden's proclamation. It's a different story for U.S. citizens, though. Okay? Omicron, Omicron, Omicron. Omicron has been detected in more than 20 countries so far, which includes Canada, Germany, the Netherlands, 
the United Kingdom and the U.S., okay? If Americans are in a country under the travel ban, can they, tra can they fly back? Yes. According to remarks made by Biden uh, yesterday, U.S. citizens and permanent residents may travel home with a negative COVID-19 test. According to a report by NBC, there are five flights per week between Newark and Johannesburg this week by United Airlines as well as three United Airlines flights per week between Dulles in Washington, D.C. and Accra, Ghana. United will also restart service between Newark and Cape Town on December 1. So on its website, Delta Airlines said it currently operates service between Johannesburg and Atlanta three times a week with no planned adjustments to service at this time. I thought Delta Airlines closed already, but good to know it's still there. Okay, California, the pandemic did, this, did them in. But anyway, when will the travel ban be lifted? Ano ba yan kakalagay lang lifted na yung tinatanong? <laughs> we just, he's just imposing it you're already asking okay also you mean how long is, gonna, is it gonna take right all right it's unknown for now when he issued the ban president biden said he would be guided by what the science and my medical team advises well so in a nutshell when we think about it do travel bans work of course right some say the u.s travel restric restrictions are necessary to contain omicron if not too narrow others have criticized their travel restrictions from south african countries saying they unfairly punish a region that quickly identified a new coronavirus variant and shared the data with the global scientific community there is very little utility of this kind of bans said uh Saad Omar, a director of the Yale, the Yale Institute of Global Health. He said that the horse has probably left the barn. Ultimately, tracking Omicron comes down to our ability to detect specific variants. Luckily, COVID-19 cases caught by Omicron are easily detected through PCR tests, according to the president's chief medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci. But they need to be confirmed through genomic sequencing all right earlier this year the cdc was sequencing about 8000 samples in the us per week wow per week 8000 samples dr rochelle walinski said at a briefing tuesday now the cdc is testing about 80000 samples per week about 1 in 7 samples which which test positive for covid-19 Okay, and there's a correction. December 2, an earlier version of this story mischaracterized U.S. travel restrictions involving 8 Southern African countries. Non-citizens traveling from those countries are barred from entering the states. Okay, as of December 2, na news yan kahapon. Okay, non-citizens traveling from those countries are not allowed to enter the United States, but the U.S hasn't banned Americans from traveling to those nations, okay? However, the State Department is actually going against it. I mean, if I were you, no na lang, right? All right. Okay, so that is that, all right? More news. Well, now we go... That is uh, our news on travel from the U.S. Now we're talking about Philippines quarantine protocols, okay? So, especially with the emergence of this Omicron virus. Philippines bears new quarantine protocols for travelers from countries not on red list, okay? A passenger tries to find a flight as several airlines have stopped flying out of South Africa uh, because of the Omicron. The Interagency Task Force, or IATF, Disclose the new testing and quarantine protocols for travelers arriving from countries which are not on the Philippines red list amidst the threat of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. Okay. Acting Presidential Spokesperson Carla Negrales said the new protocols would take effect on Friday, December 3, which is today, 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 okay? Ngayon na to take effect. Under the new guidelines, fully vaccinated travelers will be required to have a negative RT-PCR test conducted within 72 hours prior to departure from the country of origin. Dapat 48 hours, dapat mas 
konti yung hours para malaman mo na wala. Paano ka nagka-contraction ng, ng, ano, ng virus on the 24th day or 48 hours? Masyado matagal yata. Under the new guidelines, fully vaccinated travelers will be required to have an RT-PCR test conducted within 72 hours prior to the departure. Okay? The fully vaccinated travelers will undergo facility-based quarantine with an RT-PCR test taken on the fifth day, with the date of arrival being the first day. Okay. So on the fifth day, he'll take the PCR test as pwede na umuwi. So five days pa rin sa quarantine sa hotel. Regardless of a negative result, they shall be required to undergo home quarantine for 14 days from the date of arrival. So okay. So even though you get uh, negative for that, you're still gonna quarantine from home, which is fine because okay na lang yon, right? Because uh, like that in America too, you know, they quarantine from the house, okay? Regardless of a negative result, they shall be required to undergo home quarantine for 14 days. Travelers who have yet to be vaccinated, oh my gosh, hold on a second please. Travelers who are yet to be vaccinated will also be required to take a negative RT-PCR test, syempre, conducted within 72 hours before they went and left for the Philippines, okay? Upon arrival in the Philippines, they will undergo the RT-PCR test done on the seventh day, okay? With the date of arrival being the first day, all right? So those coming uh, to the Philippines will have to quarantine uh for seven days, those that didn't have any uh, vaccination yet. But for those that had, it's only five days in the hotel. That's still expensive when you think about it. And then with the date of arrival being the first day, okay? They shall be required to undergo home quarantine for 14 days from the date of arrival, regardless of a negative result, okay? The Philippines updated its red list after the, after the detection of the more infectious Omicron variant. Countries, on the lead, uh, countries that are on the red list are deemed COVID-19 high-risk areas. And travelers from these countries are temporarily banned from entering the Philippines. Okay? Currently, the Philippines has a list of 14 countries on its red list. Ito yung mga bawal na mag Punta sa Pilipinas, okay? These include Austria, Austria, Czech Republic, Hungary, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Belgium, Italy, South Africa, Botswana, Nam Namibia, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, and Mozambique. The list and travel ban to these countries from, from this country is coming to the Philippines. It's effective until December 15th. From today till December 15th. Okay? The list and the travel ban is effective once again until December 15th. The Bureau of Quarantine has been monitoring passengers from leadless countries who arrived at the country before the travel ban was announced. It said those travelers had no symptoms of COVID-19. I hope so, right? Nograles said the Department of Transportation, or DOT, has been directed to ensure that airlines board only passengers who comply with a negative RT-PCR test before travel requirement. Okay, all right. So, ano pang sinasabi? Ang mga minors daw would follow the testing, pati minors, and quarantine protocol of the parent. So, the minors will follow the quarantine protocol ng magulang nila, right? Tra kasi, they're traveling with them. Children are traveling with their guardians or their parents. Regardless of their vaccination status and country of origin, okay, they will also be taken care of, okay? For those international pa passengers who have already arrived and are 
currently undergoing quarantine. They will continue with the testing and quarantine protocols in place at the time of their arrival. So at your uh, at your final destination, you have to do quarantine, self quarantine at home. Okay. For those international passengers who have already arrived and are currently undergoing quarantine, they will continue with the testing and quarantine protocols in place at the time of their arrival. Okay. Meanwhile, Filipinos from red list countries allowed entry by a government initiated or non-government rep repatriations repatriations so sorry and by any hand flights will only be allowed to deplane via the Nino Aquino International Airport or Clark International Airport okay so now let's deal with the amended met uh, metrics now, Growlis said that the task force also amended the metrics for determining alert level classifications of provinces, highly urbanized cities, and independent component cities. Okay. Amendments include removing the one week growth rate as a met metric for escalation from alert level one to alert level two. The escalation of errors under alert level one, alert level two. Okay. So, uh, so just uh, let's just. Uh, go by these uh, alert level guidelines, okay? For example, alert level two is either case classification or total COVID bed utilization increases to moderate risk or higher. And the escalation of areas under level two to alert three if both classifications have a total, you know, uh, COVID-19 bed utilization is really, really very, very, um, uh, it's hard to get the hospital beds nowadays. But because of the decreasing number, as they're saying, of, um, of um, infections in the Philippines, so siguro ngayon meron ng mga hospital bed, hindi na kailangan mag or mamatay sa tem, right? The, the province of Apaya would be classified under alert level 2 from December 3 to 15. Under alert, under alert, and about under alert level two, establishments will be allowed to operate indoors at fifty percent capacity, with additional ten percent capacity if they have a safety seal. For outdoors, they will be allowed at seventy percent. Kaya nga nowadays yung mga places like commercial or may open air yun ang puno ng tao. Scared, di ba? Afraid ka naman din makihalubilo don. Metro Manila and several areas were earlier placed under alert level two until December 15. That's right. Sana po, wag na ma-extend. After 7.15, I pray Lord Father God that they will say it's alert level one. And we can enjoy a nice Christmas. Wag lang abusuhin po yung pag the crowd sa Divisoria, pagka crowd sa mga mall. Huwag niyo pong abusuhin para huwag tayong magbalik sa ECQ na naman. Para niyo na pong awa. Observe the safety protocol, especially now, dumadami na yung tao. Sa mall, mga bata, matanda, nagpasyalan, please, please, please observe social distancing, okay? Metro Manila and several, several areas were earlier placed under alert, alert level 2 until December 15. The task force said, the task force, for, for, <laughs> the ta task force said that starting December 1, alert level assignments shall be determined at, at every 15th and 30th of the month. So we are due for a Another switch, okay, so, so ano pa, 15. President Rodrigo Duterte in November approved the nationwide implementation of the five-tier alert level system, which limits lockdowns only in areas with high COVID-19 community transitions, okay? Very good. And on that note, okay, maraming maraming pong salamat do sa mga tao who joined us for today. On a Friday, talking about 
COVID-19 and technology and of course education. Uh, you know, we have uh, so much to talk about, uh, but we have very little time. And of course, as uh, most of the time po, ang daming pinag-uusapan, lately pa na politika. But uh, more important than anything, okay, is that we get news and information regarding how to deal with this pandemic uh, using technology to, as our ally to help us, okay? But um, this has been a, a, a wonderful, a good week for us, po. Uh, a, a good and productive week ahead. And of course, there's still the weekend to be uh, to have a productive and enjoyable weekend with. But uh, of course, continue to um, to practice the safety protocols that are needed. Even because now the quarantine protocols are changing in the world for travel because of the fear in this Omicron virus. But but never fear, God is here. We always have to pray, right? Uh, for those not religious, we just believe in us being. For you to to believe in something that you always have to have faith, hope, and love in your hearts. Because as long as we're living, we should always have hope to go on living, right? So maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga kaibigan who joined us today. Of course, uh, Cynthia Buste, Tita Agnes Lakap and family, family ni Louie ngayon, wala ka na sa Arayat. Of course, uh, Angelica Paz, who uh, always comes to, and my dear Shrey from from my online uh, online um, work, from uh, a colleague in the ESL industry, Shrey, uh, that joined us. So all the way from India, and of course, whoever others that I don't see, thank you so much for you guys and for your support. So we will be looking forward to this weekend, of course. I trust that you will have a safe weekend. Please, please, please practice social distancing, wear your mask, especially when you're in public. Thank you very much and good uh, good uh, Friday. Happy Friday to you guys. Enjoy your your lunch today. All right. And I'd like to uh, also say thank you to Hendrix Laka, who is back in our fold for the holidays. And um, birthday, happy birthday to Joy Mendoza, belated happy birthday, and to Justin Winicky. Uh, and I don't know who whose birthdays are today, but happy birthday to the Solomon. Thank you very much. And have a nice weekend. Inyong natunghayan at napakinggan ang mga makabagong pamamaraan sa mundo ng online sa pamamagitan pa rin ng Broad Streamcast Communicators. Hanggang sa muli, maraming salamat po. <music>